Well, actually, my first experience with Peng was about three years ago at the Twin Cities Yoga Festival, which is a gathering of various yoga practitioners and alter alternative medicine people. And I was helping manning a booth for a yoga center that taught kundalini yoga. And he was next door doing energy readings uh, for, uh, you know, as a demonstration for free. And there was a slight line, and I had a break from my booth. And uh, he just scanned my body for five minutes or so. And then he marked down on a sheet, which was an outline on the front and the back of the human body, about where I might be having difficulties or blockages. And uh, he identified the fact that my shoulder was sore because I had sort of irritated the uh, rotator cuff with some lifting. He identified that I had had an appendicitis uh, when I was a kid, that I had uh, back surgery on my lower back, and that uh, two summers ago I had cut the bottom of my foot, stepping on a piece of glass and had eight stitches. He didn't know why these events had occurred, but he read them in my body. And so I was uh, very impressed. I asked him, how can I learn more about this? And he said, well, I also offer Qigong classes. So that's how I first met him. And that's how I started the Qigong classes. Within his Qigong classes, we do a set that's about 16 or 21 different um, activities we do with a pause sometimes between them. And they're the same motions. I mean, each one is different, but the sequence is the same. And we practice it again and again and again. Now, rather than being what that might be like, uh, is seen as boring or repetitive or monotonous, it gives you an opportunity to really explore and get deeper and deeper and deeper into each one of these motions because the energy is so subtle, it's the only way that I think that you can capture and become engaged with it. If you just rush through it or were busy trying to learn the next one, you wouldn't be involved enough to have a sense of what it wa is. So I find this kind of te teaching method that he's doing is just incredibly effective. I don't know any other way to get through the gate of what they'd call Qigong. Well, first of all, I'm uh, very impressed with the fact that he remains a seeker because he comes from a, a lineage of uh, Qigong and martial arts, uh, was exposed to them as a young age. His uncle and family is all involved in them. And so even though he might think you know, others in that position might think they have the quote unquote truth. He continues to explore what's really effective. And he, I think for whatever hour I might practice, he practices another four or what, you know, four or five times what I'm doing simply to explore a different motion, a different nuance within the same notion, motion. And then they'll bring those back to class. And so uh, it enriches the practice. So I didn't come to address a specific health and uh, health issue. I came to optimize my energy and um, it has optimized my energy. I've raised it to another level and it's not sort of kind of uh, you know an athletic being on the edge kind of energy. It's a calm flowing energy and so the practice of Qigong and that practice married to the kind of meditation he has us done do uh, has really provided me with kind of an organized clarity. Life is a little simpler. I kind of know what's important and what's not important. I'm getting things done faster. I'm spending less time thinking about doing them and just doing them. I'm just more engaged. And so it's kind of a very uh, organized clarity. And really even more important than that, and I've done other kinds of meditative practices, etc., you know, and Qigong it has, uh, it's just very, it's, uh, it's very easy to continue to be engaged in the practice. So what's really great about it is it gives you some place to go. So let's say you want to change your state or you're feeling an energy, you know, you're down in a valley or whatever. Your mind is, uh, uh, you're confused about something. You can take a break and simply step into the practice and you can change your state. You can change your level of energy and your state of consciousness. And so having that place to go is absolutely invaluable. And you begin to have that you know, as soon as the first class. You, you can start practicing it and use it every day. So 
other kinds of meditative practices just based on whom I am or, or movement, whatever, or energy work, has always felt a little obligatory. Uh, I had to do it. I kind of forced myself to do it. This is the one that is really a welcoming to do because it's, it's fascinating to generate the energy and be in that space. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is that to me, and I think to the other students in, in, in the class that I take, uh, feel that this is a journey. You just continue to learn things about yourself and about your energy and about the practice. So it's just uh, very enriching. I see, I see, you know, this week will not feel like next week, will not feel like the week before. And so I'm on a path that provides me the ability to look and see how I'm getting in the way of myself, and also how I can, you know, actualize myself. And it has provided me an avenue to stay cleaved much more to the positive energy in myself and in the world, and to recognize when the negative energy within myself arises and be able to deal with it, or when the negative energy of the world is arising and being able to deal with it or uh, anticipate it and make uh, necessary uh, adjustments, and so um, it is. How it's uh, it's the it's the positive. It's a positive path.